So welcome, ladies, to Real Women Sharing Big Stories, the online summit. So some of you are going to watch it now and some are going to watch it after. Um, and I'm so excited to introduce my guest now, which is Kupano. And I've been following her for, I think, since I've pretty much started my business. <laughs> and I started like on uh, Instagram and then LinkedIn. And she's a managing director at uh, KPRM Media Solutions and uh, Sorted Virtual Assistant. And she's going to speak about what it is to be a young SEO. So I'm going to give it to you. Thank you so much, Dana, for having me. I truly appreciate it. And yes, we've been following each other for the longest time. Um, yeah, we've been in communication before, so it's really great to see everything come uh, full circle. Um, and to the ladies, thank you so much for showing up, guys. And I really hope that um, once I tell my story, you get to uh, learn something and get inspired to start something of your own. So as Donna had mentioned, I am the managing director for two online businesses, KPRM Media Solutions, which is a digital marketing agency that I started five years ago and Sorted Virtual Assistance, which I started two years ago. Um, honestly speaking, I would say the day in the life or the typical day of a young CEO, it basically looks like any other CEO role really, but I think what brings a different edge is of course me being younger and um, seeing things a bit differently. And of course, um, the way things are today, it's mainly digital. And there's a lot of people that are still trying to adapt and learn how to utilize technology to you know, basically scale the businesses or improve their business model as it stands. Um, so for me, it's, it's just mainly around being open to learning every single day, because I don't know everything, um, especially in the online space. You can never be comfortable. Things are always changing. Uh, things are always improving. And you need to be very open to learning new ways to improve your business on a daily basis. And of course, just researching which other ways um, you can just become better um, as a person so that you, you feed back into your businesses. So I think for me, typically for a young person, um, a lot of people, when, when I actually tell them my age, they get really shocked in terms of what I'm doing, because I'm 26 years old. And when I started KPRM, uh, I was still in varsity, I was in my second year. And uh, honestly speaking, it was not meant to be a business idea, but it ended up being that. Um, because when I was in my second year, I started thinking around how can I actually stand out from the crowd? Because marketing is such a overly saturated industry. So I thought to myself, how, how can I actually you know, bring an edge when I get interviewed. And at that time, I wanted to work for, you know, big corporate company, uh, become a marketing manager there, perhaps, et cetera. And through that journey, when I was actually being proactive and looking at what is actually trending. And at that time, I think it was like 2016, um, I stumbled upon digital marketing. I didn't know what it was. Um, and I was quite interested and intrigued. And I was just like, okay, I already have a affinity to technology. So let me see how I can incorporate this in my existing studies at the time when I was doing the PCOM. And when I started like learning more around digital marketing, because I'm actually self-taught in the space, I basically literally watched so many YouTube videos, reading articles, downloading eBooks, doing free courses on Google, you name it, I was literally doing that. And only after a year and a half, I decided that I'm gonna go and get something formal, something more lucrative and solid um, that showcases uh, the value that I bring as a digital marketer. And then I decided to um, go to Show Academy, which is an online academy educational center in Australia. And I did my diploma in digital marketing there. And I think it was for one year. And that just basically built up on the little foundation that I built uh, the past year and a half. And I got to learn quite a lot as well through that diploma. Then as I'm doing all of that, I decided to also do freelancing. So I was like literally doing everything all at the same time. And now that I look back, I'm just like, geez, I am honestly, I'm such a mover and a shaker. It's, it's actually crazy. Um, so as I was learning, I decided that I'm going to challenge myself to also just exercise each thing that I'm learning. Because I believe that with digital marketing, it's not 
where, oh, here, here's my CV. Um, thank you so much. This is how much experience I have. It's actually building the plane while you're flying it. I think that's the best analogy to describe um, how it is getting into the digital marketing space. So I thought to myself that even though I'm still learning, I'm just going to continue freelancing and do stuff for free. I did a lot of things for free, but I used it as a strategy to build my portfolio. So it wasn't a thing of, I was not seeing my value per se, but I was thinking from a long-term perspective that if I use these opportunities and, and really utilize them you know, properly, I can create a good brand for myself and a good portfolio so that when I'm ready to start actually putting a price to the value, it makes sense because I have work that I can showcase around you know, success stories, et cetera. So I didn't mind doing stuff for free. Um, I did a whole lot of that during my freelancing time and I did that for about 10 months. Then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna start this agency, which now today is KPRA Media Solutions and it's been five years and I'm so glad I decided to take that step. Um, I'm honestly so, so glad. And once I decided, once I started uh, driving the whole agency, forward, I think three years in, I decided that I'm going to start another company, <laughs> which is, I'm just like, what? Okay, but okay, <laughs> do it, girl. So I decided to start another company. With this one, honestly speaking, it was mainly around the pain point that I experienced, uh, which was at that time, I was so burnt out because I was a solo entrepreneur for the first three years, three and a half years in my business. Um, and I was really exhausted. I was really, really exhausted. And I was main, wearing so many hats. And I just thought to myself, geez, I wish I actually had help, but not necessarily an extra overhead because I wasn't making that much money as yet. But just somebody that can help me for a certain time and I pay, the, pay them for that certain time. So at that time, I was also um, you know, following quite a few international digital marketing agency owners, the ladies were really great and they were always sharing their journey. And I was always on the pulse around what they were doing. And some of them who also decided to start businesses outside of their agencies, um, decided to go into virtual assistance. So I always knew about the concept, but I just never really um, took an interest in it un until I actually experienced the pain point that the solution offers, which was mainly being burnt out, um, the convenience, the inconvenience rather of being on your own and not necessarily um, having time to do everything equally as good. You find yourself you know, stumbling on other tasks, trying to pay attention on business development, trying to scale the business, et cetera, where you ignore some of the non-essential but still yet very essential tasks to run the business. And that's when, I, that's when it hit me that, you know what, I need to actually open up a virtual assistance company because I'm not, I'm sure I'm not the only uh, small business owner that's going through this. So I decided that I'm going to do that. And also at that time, when I did my research, I realized that no one in South Africa was really being intentional or opening up a virtual assistance uh, agency or company at that time. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead first and create that at the same time. But honestly speaking, I think I'm just so happy that when I decided to open up my businesses, technology was just already on the rise. It has made things so much easier for me, to be quite honest. And um, through that, of course, I started learning the different um, aspects that, you know, what, what it really takes to become a business owner. Um, I failed a lot along the way. It may not look that way, but there's a lot of failures that, of course, I don't openly discuss and stuff. But through that, I got to learn so much about myself and how to deal with others as well. And um, just other ways to, to continue growing what I've already started building. Um, and that's what really also got to shape me to become so resilient and so focused um, with you know, running businesses at such a young age. And if anything, I think also it has to do with just my personality, to be quite honest. Um, I was raised by a very strict mom. She was raised by a grandmother. So you can only imagine. She was very strict uh, while I was in high school, primary school, very strict lady. I literally only started really having fun, probably in varsity. But funny enough, even though I did have the freedom to have fun, I didn't go all crazy. Um, and I think maybe just the fundamentals that I learned from home 
really helped me to become the leader that I am today. And yeah, that's a bit about my story. I don't know if there's any questions on the floor, but I just wanted to share how I created both of the businesses where I was at, et cetera. Nice. Um, ladies, feel free if you have questions. And I think maybe one of the things the ladies will want to hear is that first, like, how did you got to do this? Like, like what pushed you every day to stay in this? Because we all know it's not easy to have a business. Okay, so it would yeah. be great if you can also share and motivate us about the side of like being an entrepreneur and very young and how to do it and as a female and how you push yourself and how you get the clients. Because we just actually spoke about um, before we, we, we started, uh, I'll do this. Uh, before you started, we actually spoke about the part of like how not easy it is and how much time it takes to build a business, to build your name, to build your credibility. So you can actually get to the place that you start seeing clients. And I think um, a lot of us are struggling with this part because I think we always watch things, especially on, on social media. And it's like, what do you mean? Everyone have clients already making my five digit, my six digit, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, right? It's like, bottom line, it's not so easy and it doesn't work. And you move from one business to start another one. So if you can actually speak about this part. <laughs> Okay, not a problem. So uh, honestly speaking, I think the biggest thing about being an entrepreneur is the imposter syndrome. It's very difficult, right? Especially like you mentioned, social media, you get to see other people running their businesses and they're sharing their success stories or, oh, I've got so many X amount of clients this week, etc. And it can be very discouraging. Uh, you find yourself thinking, okay, so what am I doing wrong? Um, is it worth it to continue? Um, what is it that um, she's doing or he's doing um, rights that I'm not really getting correctly? So when I started out, I was very much in that as well, um, to a point where it used to even affect my way and strategy in terms of how I'm going to build these businesses. I was always looking at what other people were doing um, and trying to maybe match that or get better at that. And... <laughs> In the long term, over, over time, I realized that, you know what, I'm actually burning myself out because I was trying to do everything that I'm not. And then I realized that, you know what, um, the main power or the source of why I even started these businesses and why they're growing is my authenticity, my story. Everyone's story is different. And once I started viewing it in that way, it became better. And honestly speaking, outside of, you know, running the business, I'm very, 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 uh, passionate around spirituality um, that is like my grounding without that I wouldn't even be here today talking about these businesses and how they're growing it is literally through my uh, relationship with God and uh, doing yoga has really grounded me even more uh, I started my yoga journey probably it's been like six months now like seriously doing it um, and it, it's been tough. It hasn't been easy. Yoga is not easy, guys. Oh, my God. Like, I really thought the first time before I actually really started doing it properly, I thought, oh, it's airy, fairy, nice, cool poses. You look so ethereal and easy. And it's not. But what I, what, I think what yoga taught me at that time was you're facing yourself. You're not exercising per se, but you're actually, like, facing you. Uh, your, your, your limitations, your, your fears, your doubts, etc. It's like you're literally bringing all of that onto the mat and trying to transfer and transmute that into more positive energy to replenish yourself and continue the journey that you, you're on. So for me, it was really the spirituality, the exercising, the yoga that really kept me together, I won't lie, because I suffered from anxiety when I was growing up. It was bad, like to a point where I used to even have panic attacks in high school. Early high school, I was like grade eight, grade nine. I had hectic um, anxiety. It got better over time because I, I realized what it was early enough. And um, I did a lot of sports that helped me out. I was always like busy um, in high school. I did a lot of activities just so that I can listen the anxiety um, but funny enough, now that I look back, when I was doing those activities, I realized that it was actually shaping me to become the leader I am today. 
because in high school I did sports. I was also quite um, um, present in the Interact Club. So the Interact Club was this club where we used to uh, basically collect um, you know, certain products for less fortunate people or orphanages and we would go there and visit them and give them the stuff. And we would also pitch to sponsorships for like funding and all of that. But now that I look back, I'm like, geez, now I'm asking for funding. Now I'm like pitching and stuff. So I was just like, okay, this actually helped me uh, now that I look back. And I was also a part of senior council in my matric year. So I've always been a leader and I just didn't realize it in my space. Um, and now that I look back, I'm like, geez, actually God was prepping me to do these things that I'm doing now. But even in the midst of all of that, you still feel like you're not good enough, right? It happens. It's, it's normal, right? And for those moments when I felt like, oh, even though I'm doing all of this, I still don't feel great. That's where the spirituality, the yoga, the exercise really helped me a lot. The meditating as well really helped me a lot. Um, as cheesy as it sounds, honestly, that's what really kept me going and still keeps me going. I can never stop. If I stop, I, I don't know. <laughs> but that's what really got me to even understand who I am and my true power. And that's what got me to continue. But if anything, I think the most thing that I suffered from was anxiety, the imposter syndrome, always thinking, am I good enough, even though I'm doing all of these great things? And I think that's what I also hate, right? You find yourself, you're achieving all of these great stuff and you're still asking, is it enough? I used to have this really bad habit and I, I stopped it actually. I used to have this really bad habit where it's like, okay, great. Um, I, achieved it. I achieved this, what's next? And I was like, no, what do you mean what's next? Now just simmer in what you've just achieved and take it in and say, wow, Kobani, you did a great job. This is great really simmer in that and then ask what's next because a lot of the time being an entrepreneur as well because you're so passionate as well and you want to help the world and you want to change the world you tend to overlook what the progress or the journey to get where you want to be um and you always just want to be like what's next what's next what's next um fine i just finished this but i need to still do this i stopped doing that i stopped doing that about yeah, like at the start of the pandemic, I, I was like, no, I need to literally genuinely stop this. And during the pandemic, as tough as it was, it was one of my best years for me personally. It was a breakthrough year for me. Um, from 2020 till date, it's, it's been great for me. Um, I feel like it's my big break started from there. Um, it, was, it was still unfortunate though, because everyone else around me was suffering. It was not easy. Um, which also still affected me in some sort of way because some of them were family, close friends. Um, but like I was saying, the spirituality, just trying to see gratitude and being thankful for the things that are happening in my life that are going well, uh, kept me going. Nice. Um, just going to say, I actually love the fact that you spoke about uh, the yoga side of things uh, because, well, I'm also an addict to yoga. <laughs> And I actually discovered yoga when my mom got sick and I moved to South Africa. So that was my me time. And I love that you yeah. spoke about this part. And I think like if I'll take some takeaways from what you said, it is to find those things that makes us feel good and yeah. concentrate on this as like something that will push us. Um, one thing that I've learned from yoga is patience, that your mind has so much power because if you're not in a good yeah. day, you can feel mm. how you're not balancing well, you're not doing anything better. Um, you know, I can even, I'm struggling to do handstand. My teacher, she's over, she's doing it. I cannot jump on the wall to do it because I'm afraid. But then she'll point like, but you can do a side plank. So you're basically putting everything on one hand. But are you cannot do on both hands? I'm like, shit. <laughs> the logic in this. <laughs> Uh, you, you realize how much you have in your fears and stuff, but it also teach you a lot about foundation. Because if you look, for example, yeah. at any type of the poses, you need to have a strong foundation. And if you have it, then you can enter the pose. So when I do head balance, it comes very easy because I just know how to get my foundation and go up slowly with control, which is something that I took with me from my business as well. Um, but I would love to hear. So we spoke before we started about also the part of... Uh, like how long does it take you to actually build your business to get to a place that you're happy with the income? 
not like mm -hmm. Ooh, wow amazing but happy with it but you know yes definitely i love this question so uh like before the ladies joined in we had that brief conversation around the first two to three years from what i've observed is the worst time it's dry season and if you do get clients it's not retainers it's usually like three months contracts six month contracts etc so i always tell people that you shouldn't be too hard on yourself when when that happens because it's actually normal um and if you are in south africa for me personally i think you can also speak on this donna and pumi um the South African market is very skeptical, naturally, very suspicious. And now that things are moving online, it's even worse. <laughs> it's just like, no, why should I, why should I be listening to you? Like, I'm always getting scammed every two days around, you know, online, what's going on? No, 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 I, I don't trust it. I don't trust it. So it's a very, very, very tough market for digital on its own. Um, but you, you continue pressing on because there are those people that will be like, okay, I'm actually open to change. Let me hear how you can actually help me. Um, so the first, yeah, two to three years in my experience with the first business, there were, it, was very, it was very dry. If anything, I was getting a lot of once off. So like three months, six months, three months, six months. Sometimes it would be silent for a good three months, like nothing. But at that time, when I'm doing that, I always say to myself, you just have to keep building because that's the nature of the beast that we call business. You're going to find yourself really, um, there's a quote actually, or a meme. I don't know what to call it. If it's a quote or a meme, but I found it quite funny because it was so relatable. It said, um, so, uh, being a small business owner is like one day you can't afford McDonald's and the other day you can go to Santon and go buy something at Diamond Walk. Because it's so true. There's one time <laughs> where it's drought, it's bad, you can't do anything. And then other days it's just like, whoa, like what happened? Okay, let me go get myself like a nice weave. Let me get my nails done. Let me just enjoy this money, right? Um, and I think for me, it just echoes the nature of what business is. Um, a lot of, um, even the big guys, I think if, if you even listen to their interviews, like these billionaires or millionaires, it never happened overnight, unless of course you are a trust fund baby, hey, and your dad decided to inject a nice capital for you. But outside of that, if you know that you're starting from the bottom, it's never a fun ride, it's not a walk in the park, and it's very up and down, it fluctuates. One, one time you're doing well, the other time it's like, wow, is it even worth moving forward? But for me, I started seeing a good balance when I hit like, four and a half going to five. And I know according to um, the stats in South Africa, the first five years, within the first five years, I think, is it 80% of businesses fail? So if you pass the five year mark, congrats. That means that there is something that you're still doing right and you just need to continue doing it because the nature of business anyway is always gonna be up and down, right? Um, so for me, I think the sweet spot was probably like just after five years or nearing five years in my experience, of course, this is from a personal um, experience, but I think in general, usually the five year mark is when you start to slowly be on the rise now, because I think you've dealt with all the, the nitty gritties, you've understood what you need to do better, you, need, you understood uh, the other uh, potential gaps that you didn't see when you started in the market, because five years is a very long time for you to really sharpen and, and really get to know how to um, approach your business, um, how to build it, scale it, et cetera. So that would be my two cents that the first two to three years is very, very hectic, it's tough, but the, nearing the five-year mark or just after the five-year mark is when you start to see yourself rising. So I would love for you ladies to even type down like how many years you've got your business. Uh, it will be interesting to also get to know you and everything. Uh, I see some for three years. Uh, I said that I also do mine like, wow, 10 years. 10 years, wow. Hey, <laughs> well done. I'm doing three years yes. and just well money to give away, to give up on this. Phew. Mm. How many of you ladies just even raise your hand, your virtual hand as well. Like how many times you wanted to give up on your business? I I just want to start giving up. I say, okay, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> but sometimes yeah. it's very frustrating because 
well, in my case, uh, I am starting doing this uh, beauty and healthness entrepreneurial, but I am more focused on the teaching field. And it's very frustrating that the students come and gone two or three months, five months, and they just stop and say, what, what I'm doing wrong, what happened? So, but, but I understand, or I understood that it sometimes, well, most part of the time is not, it's not related with myself, it's related with them. That they are, maybe they are not in the, in the, it's not the time for learning a new language mm -hmm. or they are struggling with other things and say, okay, well, they will come back. So that is what helped me. And I agree with you with Le Leandra. How, how can I pronounce your name? Leandra? What's your name? I think the one is doing the, the business for, yeah, the 10 years. Yes, I'm Leandre. Well, you can call Ali me Andre. <laughs> Ali Andre. Okay, sorry, Leandre. No so I agree with you what, when you say that what sustains you is keeping faith. And is what is helping me, but I need to admit that it's very frustrating sometimes. I think we all have the frustration and I can just say one thing and then Chantel, you can speak. Um, I'll do the remove the pin for a second. Um, I remember a friend once told me a nice sentence, you know, life in general, um, it's like, I think you say in English, it's like, AKJ, like the test that you do for the heart, right? And it's up and down, that's life. If it's low, it means you're dead. If it's high, it's also not. It's always up and down. And I think that that's the journey we go through as well in business. But what I love about that component is also sharing is that it's not also so easy. And we tend to hear a lot of the good stuff outside, but no one really share the difficulties, um, the amount of time you want to give up, uh, like the things that are not doing, like, you know, like you work hard on things and it's not working out and why it's not working out. And then you feel bad about yourself. Like, what have I done that it's not, maybe I'm not in the right place to do this. Maybe I'm not so good enough to do this. Like, I don't know how many of you are feeling this, that sometimes you feel like, oh, you see, I'm a failure. Even me hosting this summit, there's moments I'm thinking like, I just hope people will join <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be standing by myself or when you host a workshop or something like that. So I'm assuming yes. I know a lot of people are feeling like this, but they're not really sharing. And I, I'm so glad you're sharing this part here. Um, just can I just quickly butt in just before Chantal? Sorry, I just wanted to say uh, Lily mentioned something about um, you know, that moment where you feel like you just want to give up, like you like, you know what, I'm done. Usually through my experience. When I'm in that space, they're like, you know what, I think I'm just going to close one of the businesses. This is just not working out. I would get a message from someone looking for services. And then I'm like, geez, this is just, just that moment when I was about to say, you know what, I'm done. And I think it's, it's, it's like God saying, no, this is just the nature of it. Continue going. I just wanted to add that because it's crazy. That's my personal experience. So I've been um, a virtual assistant for 10 years now, um, but in reality, I started on a temp basis. So I wasn't really built. The first five years was on a temp basis. Um, I have to agree with what Capano says is the first two to three years were the most difficult. I had a few clients that we were working with, um, but when COVID hit, a lot of people took the low road and they sat back and said, what are we going to do now? Whereas I think your mindset was, how can I grow myself during this period and benefit from the, the period that we were all in lockdown? Um, that when I, when I changed my mindset to that, because I was the, I also want to give up, you know, it's been seven years, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, it sort of built listening to going to the summits, the online summits, and listening to podcasts and stuff like that. It helped me grow as a person, which in turn gave me the confidence to promote our business. And in the last two years, our business has grown exponentially 
um, not quite where we want to be, but it's a step in the right direction. So keep going. <laughs> well done. Thank you for sharing this. And I think that that's really important because as I said, like, it's not an easy journey. Like I, I said it, like, you know, like you spoke about the complicity of like having the South African market. Um, and I can say it from the beginning. So for those of you who've joined also my session, um, like I really spoke about, it. it wasn't that easy for me. Like first I moved from earning lots of money, getting paid for my accommodation, getting a car, getting a phone, everything, because I work for a global company to move to zero. <laughs> like literally zero <laughs> and it wasn't easy and then I was learning okay now I need to make sure that my English is okay for this now I need to find the right networking group for this now I need to start to do what I do with my business and one thing I was sharing that I'll never forget that online course that I've done on Instagram that I paid the money and I was like literally sorry for my language but what the fuck did I just pay money for someone to teach me how to do follow 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 to grow my followers of course i can grow in 1000 followers in a month but it was against everything that i've believed in in the way of marketing and i think what i love here is that we all if we listen to each other and that's why i really wanted to host this summit is for us to hear each other's stories to learn from each other and to understand that no one have an easy challenge like a uh, journey it's a lot of key learnings that you that you've got here, but I love it that you spoke about the spirituality and again spirituality for everyone it's something else. So for you it's God and the yoga for me it's uh, yoga and to speak to my mom a lot and on yesterday's sessions there were a lot of that conversation about like connecting to your also inner voice because um, it's a lot of hard work that you do from the inside. Um, so I would love to hear from you Kapone and uh, other ladies if you want to share like. What are the things that you've learned from being like uh, going on to this journey? Because you, Kapana, you, you've never worked in corporate. So I don't know who from you worked for corporate before, but I was working for corporate. And you are used to a certain lifestyle because you know how much money you're going to get in and everything. But on the other end, there's lots of politics. I was working crazy hours. Um, so you've never experienced this. I would love to hear it, how you do and develop yourself on that side, because I know what it is from the corporate one. Thank you so much for that. Um, if anything, funny enough, I had a lot of my friends that were in corporate um, jobs. Um, and just from their stories, it never sounded fun. It was always consistently around abuse, overworking, not really getting, um, you know, um, what is this, what's the word? Um, never getting any um, stamp, of, stamp of approval in terms of, of, you know, the work that they're putting in. And yes, uh, there was a friend of mine that's like, yes, I'm getting paid, it's great, but it's, it's horror. I feel like a slave. Uh, most of the time I'm overworking, um, you're just a number, nobody really knows you, etc. And Honestly speaking, though, funny enough, I said to them, I'm like, I think as much as I haven't been in the corporate world, I wish I did do it for maybe a year or two. Hear me why I say this. Reason being is at the end of the day, as much as corporate has its um, cons, there's a lot of pros in terms of learning the actual space that you, you're working in. So I would have loved to see how people are doing um, stuff from a marketing perspective. Um, in big brands, like how do they, what is they thinking? How do they come up with strategies, et cetera? That would have already complemented my existing talents and skills with what I was doing. Um, that would, would have been a really great thing. Even maybe even working for like a big time agency, I would have also loved that. Um, just to see how everything works out. How, how do they even handle the very skeptical market of South Africa? How do they actually maneuver that? That would have been great from my end if, if that's how I look at it. So I wish I probably was there for maybe a year or two and then left and then created a business because I know uh, there's only like, I think another one guy that I know of that was in corporate for a very long time. And then he left and decided to create a digital marketing agency that has now uh, been changed to a digital, a, not digital agency, um, analytics 
so they do data and analytics now and they're working with really big corporate companies because of the relationship that he created when he was in corporate as well so it's also about also the relationships that you had um, created there at corporate so that when you decide to start your own thing there's an existing network that you can start you know having conversations around hey this is what i'm doing now um can you get, give me a small account or anything of that nature so now he's doing really well they have residency in Europe. They have offices there now. He's always flying in and out of Dubai. He's, he's always traveling. And he was like, honestly speaking, as much as corporate was a lot, it got me to think uh, in a different way. And when I started doing the whole business thing, it really helped me now that I look back. Some of the skills were really worth it. So yeah, I, I'd like to hear stories from the other ladies as well. Yeah, so, so first, I, I fully... I get what you're saying about the corporate. I think that's one of the things that I'm lucky enough and that's the way I also teach uh, social media and marketing from the side of what it is when you worked for someone else's brand. Because um, like some of the brands that I was dealing with was uh, in South Africa, it's Babysoft, Clinic, stuff like this. Um, so you do have in common. So I would recommend for you guys also to join to the session in the evening from a lady from Kimberly Clark uh, about how they also do things in corporate and you can bring it. So I, I can resonate with you what you're saying. So I would actually ask you what's going to prevent you from actually giving it a try now and try to maybe merge it and see if you can get it. And then I see for Haley here. So I understand Haley, you are still juggling with corporate to your business. And so well done. Uh, I know I could have done, I, I could not do the two of them together because then I wouldn't be 100% mm -hmm. myself in both of them. So I would love also if Haley, you feel like sharing after as well, what's gonna get you to live corporate and be focusing just on your business? All right, so for me, honestly speaking, I have thought about that, but you know, just from people that have been in corporates, it's very, uh, it's very demanding. So I don't know how I'm going to juggle running two businesses and then doing a corporate job. Oh my God, I'll probably pass out. So <laughs> uh, that's literally what it is. And honestly speaking, um, my first business has gotten to that rise now. Like, I'm, you know, I'm taking care of myself quite nicely. I, I would, I still want more money, but like, it's not like, you know, where I was when I was, when I just started the agency. So I'm starting to really see a good uptake and I have um, very strong hope and faith around the future of the agency as well, where it's going. Um, so yeah, corporate would definitely not be in the books for me right now, probably just to experience maybe Jeff shadowing or something that would be nice, but working there now, like for a year, two years, oh God, uh, I think I'd probably literally lose it. <laughs> Hi. <Ellie>. Hello. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share a little bit. Um, so I work in marketing for a FinTech startup. But on the side, I also have a bit of a fashion business. Um, and I found that growing into my business while working has been, it's given me, my business gives me um, an outlet for what I'm passionate about. And then corporate gives you the stability that I currently need financially, so forth. Um, I have just joined a really amazing life coach. And we are currently in the position of just transitioning out of corporate and making my business my sole my soul baby and my soul stability, passion, everything. No, it's exciting. Yeah, I can see the marketing from the back. So show you. <laughs> yeah. Look, I know that it was something that I thought about and then I said, you know what, I, I know myself and I think it goes back to really to get to know yourself, you know, what's right for you and what's not. And, and really to connect to yourself because once you connect to yourself and you know, you know how you can actually juggle and do all the stuff and where you can bring your takeaways. I know that I would not be able to combine them because I was the person that I was working until super late. Okay. So in Israel, it works very differently. So that's why when I used to, when I came to the South, South Africa, I was like, everyone come to the office like at seven o'clock in the morning. I'm like, no way. 
and then they leave early at four. I'm the person that comes like to half past nine, 10 o'clock to the office, but I'm going to live at seven, eight, nine, so, or go home and work. So you find yourself, you're working so hard and eventually you're not always getting the appreciation and the good words. Um, there's a lot of politics in corporate. Uh, there's actually a lot of politics as well in uh, small business. If you look at the different communities and stuff, you can find it. Um, and I think from that, I want to I want to ask you, Kapana, and I would love for you to share about the building of communities that you've done. Because again, you didn't come from any corporate stuff. You built your community by yourself. I watch you on LinkedIn and I see you have lots of people commenting, reacting. You really build something there. So it will be great if you can share with us about have you built it and to give us some tips, um, how you've done it, how you eventually were able to convert them and some of them at least like to actual clients. Okay, great. Uh, thanks for that question. So <laughs> honestly speaking, like, like you said, I literally started like alone, <laughs> literally, but funny enough, I think when I, the first year of starting KPRM, I did a lot of like cold calling, cold uh, emailing, et cetera. And I was still learning how to like work my strategy at that time. Then I saw, um, I stumbled upon LinkedIn some other day when I was at work and I was like, okay, this is interesting. I didn't know how to use it then. That was like year two into my business now. And I decided to just basically observe how people utilize the platform. And then I started like researching what is it about? And I realized that, oh, okay, you can actually get a job here or you can also create, you know, opportunities for yourself if you're a business owner, et cetera. So then I decided that I'm just going to start a business page for KPRM. I don't know what the hell I was doing. I was just putting out content, connecting with people, commenting on people's uh, stuff, et cetera, even creating like video content. Like even now I'm not as robust as I used to be. Like I was, Yo, I was posting all the time on that platform. But little did I know that when I was doing that, because at the same time, I believe that in order to learn something, you have to use it to the best, like to the, the utmost to actually understand, okay, this is working for me or this is not working for me. So as I was doing that, little did I know, I was actually creating a community as I was creating or, or trying to learn the platform because I was also showcasing authentically who I am, what I do, um, offering services, of course, and all of that. So mainly my main community, I definitely built it through LinkedIn and I tried to move them to my other platforms, of course. Um, like probably 90% of the, the clients that I got throughout uh, building KPRM literally came from LinkedIn. Some of them are still my clients today. And I started conversations with them two, three years ago on LinkedIn. Um, so I honestly feel like just for me learning the platform, I was actually building a, a little community or network. I remember at some point I even created a, a, a little hashtag, uh, which I'm trying to revive again through my TikTok audience because I'm trying to create LinkedIn content for, for them there. I did a, a little bit of like a hashtag 14 day challenge where I was helping people how to use LinkedIn and what type of content they need to create. And I was so amazed by the reception or the, 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 the response that I got when I did that challenge for them on LinkedIn. And I think through those little challenges and helping them out when they had um, questions in my DMs, really started creating a community that I didn't even realize was actually strong. Because even till this day, they are the ones that are commenting on my LinkedIn posts and showing me, you know, um, you know, support and just encouraging me, etc. So honestly speaking, I didn't really have any any intention around creating a community at that time. But as I was building, it just started growing uh, from there. Um, and then in terms of what you said around um, politics around small businesses, you definitely right. I've had a few experiences where people would um, come to me and, and send me messages uh, and come with that intent of, yes, I want to collaborate with you. Uh, let's work together only for them just to copy what I'm doing or um, ridicule what I'm doing, uh, et cetera. I've had some really weird um, uh, yeah, occurrences throughout my, my business journey and career. Um, 
But if anything, I think it's just about you deciding. I think today, if anything, I'm trying to be a little bit more intentional around building a community, like maybe ultimately creating some sort of WhatsApp group or like a Facebook group thing that's going on because I've met uh, a lot of uh, business ladies online, including Sabang, I can see she's here. Um, she's also building her own digital marketing agency. So it's great to see her grow as well. Um, and just basically all those small uh, interactions that you have with ladies that are in your space or doing their own thing, ultimately create a community. And I think also like summits like this, you honestly gave me an idea. I was just like, geez, I think maybe I should also start creating some sort of something, whether it's every month, just come as ladies, sharing ideas. Um, and of course, that's if you're genuine, like you genuinely want to help and you, and you want to uh, be a part of this uh, little um, community, that would be great. So honestly speaking, Donna, I think this is great what you've just created, honestly. This is lovely. <laughs> Chris, thank you. <laughs> Look, um, if I was, again, go back to what you said. So one of the things that I want to give ladies the tip is that first you spoke about a hashtag. Um, so I just want to say something about this. Um, and that's something I think everyone can do. So take your business name, take something in your business and try to create your own hashtag. So for example, you've done about the challenge and what I've done is that my company name is Big Consulting. So I use a lot of hashtags around the big, especially on Instagram. So when I ask people to like respond to like one of my posts, I will say, if you agree with me, use the hashtag big yes. This way I'm using my business name, but I'm also getting them to interact. So that's just an idea for you ladies to use. So you can find something like this. So I will always say, you'll see me responding big yay in a hashtag or big thank you, or I'll play with this. And I even play with this in the name of the summit, okay? Of the real woman sharing big stories. And I've, that's what I've done in a Facebook group, on a LinkedIn group that I call it big successes. Cause I was also like, I was thinking about just sharing like uh, to use the word big, but I said like, oh, people will think that I'm maybe thinking about overweight or stuff like this and get offended. So I find a different way to play with it. So that's something that you can definitely use for your business. And another thing you spoke about is the community. And I think that this is the some, something that is super, super, super important when you're trying to build your brand. And I think that's what's working for you so well, Kapana, because and that's what I love to see when I watch your stuff on LinkedIn. I can see the community you, you build there. And eventually that's something each and every one of us needs to focus on. And when you're focusing on building a community, on maintaining that community, and on the same time helping it to grow, that needs to be the focus of your business. And that takes lots of time and lots of patience. Um, I know because I do it in both languages, okay? So I also manage a community of thousands of people um, Israelis so I'm posting there every day sharing content I do lives there in Hebrew then I move to a live in English and then all that but it's worth it because when you do it you're really able to grow your business and I think that's what you've done and I love the fact that you said you have no clue what to do with this because I think all of us when we enter a new platform or doing something like we're not sure what to do but it's if I'll link it to the previous session that we had about budgeting and planning, and she was saying there's just to start, it is, it's to start. It's like they're saying like one day or day one, okay? Mm -hmm. Not one day, you're constantly a day one trying to do and push. So I'm gonna give you a point to say a few words and then if you guys have questions, that's your time. Uh, so feel free. <laughs> It's your, if you want to say a summary or like say something else, but yeah. Yes, yes. I just, sorry, sorry. Can I just uh, quickly come in? I just want to say, um, just from what you said, uh, Dana, around the whole community thing, building on, on LinkedIn. Funny enough, from my experience as well, after, you know, the, the actual uh, building of the community online, you thinking to yourself, oh, maybe they're just commenting to, just to comment, but literally, I've had conversations in DMs where they're like, hey, Kobano, this person's looking for marketing services. I've referred them to you. I sent them your number. And that's the beauty of creating community because then they refer without you, you know, putting in that actual effort. So 
it, it's, 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 it's really great for when you want someone to ultimately become like some sort of ambassador or representative for you because you've shown yourself authentically and they love what they see. Exactly, it's, um, and I love it. And look, this is, a, this is how you build a business, by the way. This is how all the big brands also building their business. They building a community. That's why I recommend for you to join to this the one session. Uh, I've been very on it. Like it's at eight o'clock, but I'm probably gonna move it to eight fifteen or half past eight because of low chatting. So stay tuned to this. But she's also she worked as a marketing manager in Coca Cola and other companies, and now she's in the company I used to work for. And she's gonna speak how they building a community as well. So even the big brands are focusing on building community. Uh, and when you work on building a community, the clients are just coming. I promise you, it's just like this. So ladies, if you have any questions or something like this, I'm going to do the gallery. I think Tapang wanted to say something just before I put it in. I think Tapang wanted to say something. Hi, ladies. This was actually such a good platform. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, so I have a question for... Um, Kopano and Chantal and I think uh, Leandri is the person who said she's been in business for a very long time um, the question I have is the, I have two questions actually the first one is if you like knowing what you know now about business and if you were to start all over again what is it that you would do differently um, and the second question is you know when you start your business like you said earlier on Kopano you wear so many hats um, and sometimes you find yourself more focused on like finding clients and you sometimes neglect say your business's social media platforms because that's what I'm going through right now I'm there's a lot going on so how do you balance um, being the digital marketer for your um, clients but also showing up for your business online as well all right, um, so I'll just quickly answer the second one, then I'll answer the first one. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from, 100%. Um, if anything, uh, early in my business, I was literally going through the same thing, where I was trying to manage, you know, trying to build for my clients, where I started like literally neglecting the actual KPRM brand. But I think what has really helped me, and I think I'm so blessed and grateful to say, is that I do have a team and the team have now taken over to actually create the content for me on, on behalf of me. But before the team, because I know you're still in the, in the space of getting to you know, build a team, before that, I had to really be so strict with my time. So I would make sure that even though fine, I'm helping clients whenever I get free time, which sucked, because then it would really take away from my free time, I would then create batches of content, like maybe two, yeah, two to three months worth of content, even if it means maybe posting once a week or twice a week, but something just to be there, to be active. That's what I used to do. So I would create in batch on Canva and then I would schedule via Buffer. That time I was using Buffer because it was like the cheapest. Um, I did that. And um, yeah, that's basically what worked for me at that time. Um, so I think I would, I would, I would uh, definitely recommend that you try something like that. It's going to suck because it's going to feed into your free time. But at the end of the day, it's going to it's going to help you at the end of the day. Honestly, it's going to help you because you're building something that's for you. That's going to benefit you in the long run. So even if it's on a weekend, usually for me, I would always do Saturdays and Sundays. I would um, sit down, create the content, the copy, and then just schedule it on Buffer and then it will post itself. Sometimes it will come with issues because I know these scheduling tools can can be annoying sometimes. But generally, though, it would literally just um, work out. So pre-planning, having a content schedule really helped me when I was really busy, where I couldn't even look at, like even today, honestly speaking, I'm so ashamed, but I need to update my website for KPRM. It's been the same since I started the business. So I haven't had time, even though I have a team. Can you imagine? I haven't had time to sit them down and say, guys, can you please like change? Cause I know what I want to change, but I'm too busy. So I'm just like, geez, I need to get to this genuinely. Cause I saw a friend of mine on Instagram. She's like, finally revamped my website. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such a trigger because I still need to update my website. So trust me, it's completely normal. Honestly speaking, 
you're going to get really busy at some point you're going to put your own brand in the back burner because i even had a conversation with the same friend i was like why is it that as digital marketers we're so great at marketing other people's brands but ourselves yeah <laughs> it's another thing it's another thing it's hard or it's like now all of a sudden you don't know how to explain what you do why they need to come to you it's just like oh my gosh why is now all the ideas not coming to me when i have to talk about my own business but other business or oh geez the passion the ideas will just start flowing like water it's completely normal and then i think you asked me what would i change knowing what i know now if i had to start my business again um honestly speaking i would have changed maybe not starting the business so soon and actually doing corporate for maybe a year or two i'll probably do that because now that i brought it up i probably would have decided to do like corporate maybe for a year or two and then start my business because i feel like i would have had learned even way more that i've um learned so far through the experience of being in a corporate company so if i can jump in there um uh, on the same topic kapana i have to agree with you um yes i was in corporate for 25 years i became ill because i worked 14 16 18 hours a day so my work didn't start at 8 o'clock and finish at 5 o'clock I worked before I went to work. I worked, went to work. I came home. I worked again. My family suffered. Um, one thing I would change is I would have jumped in with both feet sooner. Built myself, became part of a community sooner. It would not have taken me then ten years, you know, as to where I am now. Because literally, only when I just made that decision to jump in with both feet. Did the business actually go from being a part-time side hustle to a business? So yeah, um, that's my ten cents worth. <laughs> no, but I fully agree with you. And I said, like you heard me on my on my session, so I would recommend for you to watch it. But like I always wanted to do my own thing, but I was working in corporate because I always was afraid. Okay, I was really afraid of doing this. Like. Even when I started my business and I wasn't charging much, I was thinking to myself, "Who's going to pay for this? Who actually want to listen to me?" And then I needed to do to myself pep talks about like, "Wait." And I think that's the one thing that like corporate does help you with is that I used to tell myself, "Okay, this company paid lots of money to put you here to build their brand and do this. So why can you not explain it to others?" What's wrong with you? Like I would do this conversation to myself so many times, um, and it's funny because like um, I've been doing so much process with myself about learning. Like I know, and I, I did mention it. Like it takes time to understand that it's okay to put a picture of yourself. You're not an narcissist or like you know too much loving yourself. It takes time to feel comfortable to be in front of audience and to speak about and to understand that people want to listen. Um, Stuff like this, and I was also making a joke. So um, I've I've got a rescue dog, um, and I actually participated on a Netflix TV series for this. I received actually a WhatsApp message if I want to participate in this, and I said, "Okay, it's a scam because who WhatsApp something like this, right?" I'm still Israeli. I was very like I was googling and checking. I said yes, and even there in the show, and it's still on Netflix. I was saying to the lady that. I wasn't even ready to put my roots down in South Africa because I was already on my I'm on the go. Okay? Cuz I'm not sure if my business is going to succeed. I don't know if I can get like the money that I want. It's not easy cuz people don't trust me here. I'm a foreigner. My accent, da da da. da. It takes a time. And only just before COVID started I bought a washing machine and I was even laughing at the at the at the show and saying like this is me putting my roots down having a washing machine. Okay, this is like me saying I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna give it a try, but it's not easy, and it's not an easy journey. Um, and actually, something I've started is that, and if some ladies want, I would more than welcome. Like you just ask me after, and I'll put a link. I've actually started a Telegram group, like a mini tiny community, and it's not for a lot of people on purpose. And I'm in. Okay, and then and the purpose of the group is to brainstorm. is to share our issues our problems to say like okay i'm stuck i'm not sure like i was even asking because it took me time to understand the pricing 
Uh, so you know what, while we still are here, I'm going to quickly open Telegram and I'm going to send you the link now while we're all here. And it's a group just to brainstorm because Look, I have people that work in marketing and I always use their advice. Like, what do you think about this design? What do you think about this? I use people from other places on purpose. Because even when I was working for a corporate, I always ask people that actually not coming from marketing. What do they think about my design? Because if the message was clear to them, it means it's going to be clear for everyone else.